Hello and welcome. I am Raghav and today we are going to discuss something very interesting and that is what is benchmark and how do we do benchmarking in performance testing. So before we go into the steps on how do we do this process, how do we create the benchmarks for our performance testing, let us learn what is benchmark in performance testing. So let's imagine you have to do performance testing of an application. It can be a web page or an API or any software. So for this, you will use some performance testing tool like JMeter, Gatling, LoadRunner, NeoLoad, etc. And you will create the tests and then you will run the test with different user loads like 50 users, 100 users, 1000, 50,000, 100,000 and so on. And then after running the test, you will get the results and there you will get all the metrics like the response time, the average response time, minimum, max response time, throughput, latency, etc. Now we have got all the results, but on what basis can you say the performance of the application is excellent, good or bad? So we need some standard, we need some data, some metrics against which we can compare our result and then we can say the performance is good or bad. So this metric or this data against which we compare the performance of our application so that we can check and say if the performance is good, bad, excellent, etc. is the benchmark and in very, very simple words, we can say the reference or the standard against which the performance of the application or the service is measured is called benchmark of the application. Okay. With this knowledge, let us go and see how do we decide the benchmark for performance testing. And here we have five steps. Step number one will be we will understand the requirements. Now here we can talk to the stakeholders of the application. We can talk to our project uh, mates, our teammates, the business team, and we have to get the expected user load. We have to understand and get what will be the expected user load on the application in real world when the users will be using the application, how much user load do we expect, whether they will be 50,000 concurrent users or 100,000 concurrent users. That means 50,000 users using the application at a time. So what will be the expected user load and the expected response time? So when let's say 50,000 users is the expected user load. So when these number of users are using the application at the same time, what should be the response time of the application? Let's say we are testing a web page. So when this many users are using the web page or working on the web page, what should be the response time, whether it should be less than one second, two seconds and so on. So this data, this metric we have to get from our stakeholders, from the owners of the application or from the business team or our project team. And we have to understand it very, very carefully. We also have to understand and get any specific performance metrics that needs to be met. So this expected user load and the response time is the very very basic uh, data or metric we need but then uh, after this if the stakeholders or the owners also want us to check other things like the throughput that is the requests per second the latency the error percentage etc so we have to take in all this and we have to document all the requirements we all we can also check the industry specific standards or the regulatory requirements that needs to be considered for that type of application. So that could be that will be very, very useful and important. If you see any industry standards for that application or type of application, also consider that. So this will be step number one. Now, after this, step number two is we will identify the KPIs or the key performance indicators. Now here, the standard or the general KPIs are the response time where we check the minimum, maximum and average response time, the throughput that is request per seconds, the error rate, the percent of failed requests, the latency that is the time taken for the request to be processed. Latency is the time when uh, we send our request and our request, the complete requests goes to the server and it is processed. So this is the latency. Then the resource utilization like the CPU, memory, disk usage during our testing. All these are the key performance indicators that we have to 
check during our performance testing so we have to again talk to our st stakeholders the project team the business team and get all the kpis that needs to be tested during the performance test after this we can determine the benchmark values this is step number three so based on the earlier two steps once we have understood the requirements we have taken and documented all the requirements we have also taken in all the key performance indicators now we can determine the benchmark values and this will depend on the first two steps whatever uh, data we have got from the stakeholders and then we can also include the industry standards for example if we are doing a testing on a web page the google recommendation for a web page performance testing or the web page load time is three seconds or less i believe this is the latest data and it also depends on the type of web page whether it is a heavy page with videos and all those uh, animations or it is a very simple page so we can take this industry standards we can also get the historical data now historical data is the result of the previous performance tests or the load tests and in case we do not have this we do not we have not done any earlier tests then we can also get the data from the production logs so that means we can s get the real world logs that is when the users the real world users are using the application we can get the logs from there we can ask our team to get the production logs and we can the from there we can determine that what was the user load at different times and then what was the response of the application and based on that we can create our benchmark values then we can also take into consideration the business requirements so we can talk to the stakeholders the business team and we can decide and we can uh, you know get into the details and ask the business team that what is your expectation for the response time or the throughput of the application and we can create benchmark values for that and then we can also compare or we can take into consideration some similar application or website and compare the performance and we can do so, uh, some analysis of what is their performance and based on that we can create the benchmark values for our performance test so this is a very a very important step where we actually determine and decide the values for our benchmark for our performance test and then step number four is we will now we can now categorize the performance so we can now create categories whether uh, our performance is excellent good fair poor and we can create these categories based on some metrics for example we can say that if the response time is less than one second the throughput is greater than 100 requests per second and the error rate is less than one percent then we can say the performance is excellent and this will uh, you can decide based on your application and the benchmark values and all the requirements that you have got from the stakeholders and similarly we can create other categories now this is very very important because after you do your performance test and you have to publish the results and you have to communicate with the stakeholders it will not be very much recommended that you share the entire report of performance testing with the stakeholders and when you will do performance testing it is not a single performance test you will be doing a lot of runs with different user loads and you will be doing it multiple times and then after that you will be consolidating the report and creating the averages after uh, calculating all the results of the performance test so therefore you cannot share all the sheets of your performance test results with all the stakeholders so they need to know in very very simple terms whether the performance was excellent good poor good or bad etc and it is also recommended that when you talk within your teams you have some simple communication and categories you have some terminologies to just say that the performance was good or bad uh, and then if somebody asks you for the details then you can attach the complete result and then they can have a look into that so it is very very important to categorize the performance and then step number five is after we have created all these categories benchmark values and all all this data we have to validate this with the stakeholders so we have to make sure that everyone agrees to this benchmark 
we can share our benchmark and then take written approval from the stakeholders before we start our performance test and then when we do our performance test it is good that we create a separate environment we do not disturb any other environment and we generally do not do performance testing on a production environment this is a completely different topic and i will talk about it later but today we have discussed and understood what is benchmark and how do we decide benchmark for performance testing i hope this was very useful i will see you in the next session of ask raghav thank you for watching and never stop learning